everyone welcome to my channel my name is Chris and today I thought I would step outside of my backyard and into my front yard kind of give you a little tour of what it's like I have big plans for the front yard this year I really want to tackle it because it's absolutely horrible I hate it it's not the worst yard in the neighborhood but I would venture to say it might be close just because I I neglect it we mow it but other than that, I don't spend a whole lot of time in my front yard, so I've always focused more on the back where I spend most of the time. But it is time to tackle this front yard. So let's go ahead and get the tour started. I'll show you what I have already and kind of talk about what the plans are going forward and what I really hope to accomplish this year with this front yard. I'm going to start over here right along the sidewalk in this little garden area between my sidewalk and the garage. I planted these grasses quite a while ago. Gosh, it's had to been like three or four years or so. And they have actually done really well. I'm quite happy. This area doesn't really get a whole lot of sun or rain because we have Christmas light <laughs> lined eaves right here so it kind of blocks the water from this little corner area but they've actually done really well despite that and of course everybody has to be approved by my dog somebody gave me that and i thought it was really cute so i put it up here this here is catnip that we started together and then this is cleavers that just kind of made its way into this pot and because cleavers is such a wonderful plant I decided to leave it. If you want to know more about cleavers, I have a video on it and I can link it below. Back here I have some rogue lemon balm that is not going to be able to stay there. This, I got this cute little angry orchard wheelbarrow that I want to do something with, I just haven't decided what. I have some bleeding hearts there and right here that just kind of decided to pop up and this one especially is not going to be able to stay here. This is one of my beautiful bleeding hearts. It's huge. I can't believe this was a tiny plant when I first planted it, but it's massive now. This is my main patch of lemon balm, which is just doing amazing, which of course it's a mint. So it is working its way to going quite rogue. Behind here, I put the sweet Sicily that I got from one of my neighbor gals. Well, she doesn't, she doesn't live in my neighborhood, but she lives just outside of town and gave me that plant for free. This here is a white bleeding heart and it is just starting to get its flowers. Tucked under here is a plant that I can't remember what it is, but it comes back every single year. And then of course some pots I have to clean up, a few weeds, a rose that didn't make it. And then this beast is rosemary. This was just a tiny little plant when I planted it several years ago and it just exploded. The rosemary is definitely a plant that we have to take care of because it crowds out the sidewalk. And as much as I love rosemary and I love having it, I don't need it to take over. <laughs> I don't need that much rosemary. Past that, I kind of have just this big, ugly space. This is a cherry tree, and it's actually grafted with three different types, but only half of it is still alive. The, the other half looks like it did not make it through all of the dry, hot weather we had last summer. This area down here was supposed to be like the herb garden medicinal herb garden, not just an herb garden. This is trickery. It's doing really, really well. That's a lavender plant, and that's a lavender plant. I'm kind of hoping that these are foxglove, because that's what that is right there. That is not a medicinal herb. Don't ingest foxglove, but it is really pretty. This is supposed to be a cardinal plant and it doesn't look like it wants to come back this year. So it's a shame because it's really pretty and the hummingbirds really love it. This is a salvia. 
and this is kind of embarrassing, but I put this here and then I didn't get it actually planted in the ground and the roots grew through the pot into the ground and now I can't really get it up. So it lives in the pot in the ground, which is not ideal, but hopefully I'll figure out a way to fix that without tearing out the entire plant. Here's some of our starts that we have that are doing really well that are gonna go up here. This is a straw flower, as are these two. This is one of the yarrows. And then this one right here is the Ella Campaign. The Ella Campaign I definitely wanna put into this herb area, this medicinal herb area, since that is a very medicinal plant. Also in this area, is where I put the comfrey that I got. The comfrey was from the same neighbor that I got the sweet sicily from. And then beyond that is just a gigantic mess. Lots of dandelions, big piles of needles from this really massive cedar tree on my neighbor's property. This here is actually sage, broadleaf sage, that made it through the year. It never actually completely died off over the course of the winter, and I was very surprised at that. I have blueberries that never made it, that never got planted, and they're completely dead. Down here along the front sidewalk, I just started planting this out. I have lots of irises. This used to be full of tulips, but the tulips don't really come up anymore. I just have a couple here and there. So I wanted to put something else to kind of fill that in. So in here, I put some gold alyssum. I put some amazing gray poppy. There's Shasta daisy. So this gold alyssum is going to be really beautiful against these white flowers and the gray flowers. I put my cosmos back here, at least some of my cosmos. These are the double dutch cosmos that look absolutely gorgeous. Underneath there is actually more alyssum. That's a blue alyssum called royal carpet. Here is where I put the orange prints, which is looking quite lovely. I really love how vibrant orange this flower is. And underneath here, I put some white alyssum. So I think the white and the orange are going to contrast beautifully. And then I have this major patch of iris that just kind of exploded. I used to have just a few back here along this border. And this is what it's done. I'm pretty sure you can't tame iris even if you wanted to. So I really do need to thin this out. And probably after the season this fall, I will probably separate these and give some of them to my neighbors. This area right next to it is what I consider my shade garden. This garden gets late afternoon sun, but that's pretty much it. I have this maple that just kind of hangs out here but I do need to trim all of this new growth off because it just kind of looks ugly. <laughs> Underneath of it is where I put our coleus. I, they're gonna do amazing. I put coleus in this area every year and they take off and just look lovely. So I'm very very excited about that. I have a little hosta, and then the Lenten Rose. The Lenten Rose is kind of the focal point for this area. It gets a little bit bigger every year, and I love how it just provides a little bit of color to this area, along with the Bleeding Heart over here. That I added, I think I added that last year. So between the Bleeding Heart and the Lenten Rose, it's really helped bring some color to an otherwise fairly boring area. Here's a fun little thing. This used to be a tree, but the city cut it down last fall. They're supposed to grind the stump this fall, and then next year they're gonna replace the sidewalk here where the roots have kind of buckled it. 
This used to have yarrow planted around it, but I don't see the yarrow coming back after last year. But what I do have is this Dusty Miller. This Dusty Miller is probably, gosh, six or seven years old, I would bet. I am shocked every single year that it comes back. It was sold to me as an annual, but it certainly is not an annual, at least not in my area. If it has the will to grow, then I'm just gonna let it grow. And before they grind that stump, I will probably move that into my yard. Hopefully it survives being transplanted because I just can't kill something that wants to live that bad. And here, here you have the bulk of the yard that I covered in cardboard. This is all gonna go. It does have, it actually has a lot more grass than it used to. When I first moved in, this used to be just moss, basically. There's a lot of moss and a lot of weeds. That was pretty much it. But all of this is gonna come out over here you can kind of see what I mean I pull this up so it was just a bunch of these weeds and all of this area is going to get a huge makeover so my idea is to start a path from right here that starts over near my driveway kind of come through this area curve around come through here and then it's going to branch off over here towards my front door and then also branch over here towards the back area. I want to have this beautiful path that kind of weaves through here. What I want to do along the side of the path is basically to have kind of a huge flower bed filled with sunflowers and zinnias and have some cosmos. All of those flower starts that we kind of started together and some of them that I talked about that I didn't actually get to start with you. I have plans for those to go up here along the sides of the path. And then today I decided that along this path, about right in here before it curves over in here, I'm going to put a trellis here. And then over here, Right before it goes towards the back area, I'm going to put a trellis over here too. If you watched my video where I talked about what I was going to plant for the year, I had a lot of things that were going to need trellising. Like I had a few different types of pole beans and some winter squash and things like that that I didn't really know where I was going to put, but I knew I was going to put them up in the front because I didn't have any room for them in the back. These trellises are where I'm planning to put them. And also right here along this sidewalk, right where it comes around this corner here, I want to put another trellis here <laughs> after I beat back the rosemary. And this actually is where I'm going to put the beans. I just think it'll be so fun that when you walk up to the front of my house, you will walk under this trellis full of beans. I think it just sounds amazing and I cannot wait to make that happen actually. This trellis over here I think I'm gonna put the cucumbers and then this one will probably be the winter squash and I think I'm gonna put a little fence right along here not because I need to block my neighbor he's actually an amazing neighbor but I kind of want to have a border because I want to put the tallest plants up against that. So all of the sunflowers for sure and just have this beautiful backdrop of sunflowers. Back here we need to beat back some cherry. This is a cherry bush. I, I think it's a Romeo. I don't think it's Juliet. I think it's a Romeo. When I bought that, it was probably maybe six inches tall. It was tiny and I thought there is no way this plant is going to do much. Plus I mail ordered it and if you ever mail order plants, you know that it's sometimes it works out great and sometimes it really doesn't. And I wasn't convinced that it was going to, but as you can see, it did like in a very massive way. And I should have been taking care of this long before now, 
and then I could contain it to the original bush right here instead of having all of these extra pieces to it. So we definitely do need to trim this and get it a little bit better contained. Over here, other than the weeds, lots and lots of weeds. Back here, I don't know if you can see. This right here is a jasmine plant. I planted that, I think, two years ago. And then down here amongst these weeds, these flowers right here, they're Rubecchia. And I have our echinacea plants that we started. I want to put them over here with the Rubecchia or Black Eyed Susan. It's another name you might know it by. But having the yellow of that against the purple of this, I think is going to be really stunning. This is a peach rose. I did prune it this spring, but it still is probably going to get a little out of control this year. This right here is Arnica that I planted. I did keep it in this pot and it looks like it has stayed in this pot, which is nice. This is another wonderful medicinal herb that we'll talk about as it gets, as it grows through the season. Here in this pot, that doesn't look like it's doing all that great is some red clover. I'll probably just end up wiping this pot out and doing something else with it if the red clover doesn't really want to come back. And then right in front here, this is a white lilac. This bloomed last year, but it does, it has kind of gotten a little out of control and I just noticed, you see, there's a snail. I hate snails just as much as slugs because they eat everything. Here's another one. We have so many problems, snails and slugs. Although slugs are worse than snails. At least, in my opinion, slugs are worse than snails. But I don't like snails either because they eat all my plants. And then the last little thing that I have here is some peppermint. It is coming up along the edges here. Hopefully I get more coming up. I don't think it probably will. I think this is about as good as it's going to get. So I might add some more peppermint because I really, really do want to grow my own peppermint this year. And that is it. One nice bit of color, this bush right here. So this bush right here, it's a lilac. It's actually on my neighbor's property, but I will probably trim it a little bit on my side. It gives a really lovely pink lilac that adds a nice little backdrop of color to my yard. But I'm really excited to see this yard transform into the mess, like the ridiculously embarrassing mess that it is right now, into this beautiful flower garden with this lovely trellised path. So there you have my front yard. I thank you so much for joining me today, and I can't wait to get started on this and have it actually turn into something that I enjoy being in versus... Ever since I bought this house, I have never really enjoyed being in the front yard because it's just, it's boring and it's bland. I really, I feel like there's just no point to being up here, honestly. There's nothing enjoyable about it for me. So I'm really looking forward to turning it into an enjoyable place to be. And I'm really looking forward to having you along on the journey. So. At any point, if you have any suggestions, I am all ears. This big type of project, this it's kind of a landscaping project, basically. And that is not my specialty. So if you have any suggestions along the way, I am happy to listen to them. You can always put them in the comments. And we can build the most amazing front yard garden in my neighborhood. I can turn it from this into something that not only I can enjoy, but everybody who walks by. We have a lot of walkers, a lot of dog walkers, a lot of kids. I want it to be something that when everybody walks by, they also find enjoyment. So I thank you so much for joining me today. 
If you like this video, make sure you hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can follow along with the progress and provide your input if you have any. Thank you so much, and I hope to see you next time.